page uh, three on the vector notes, I want to uh, do this non-graphically. So I'm going to do it everything trigonometrically. I just want to put a little coordinate axis on here so you can sort of see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to go and draw one like this and draw like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to have three different weights that are going to hang off this. So if you look at the very first one, it says that the uh, very first weight is for 40 grams at 40 degrees. So I'm not drawing this at anything to scale. I'm just going to say that that vector is 40 grams. And what degree is it? 40. 40. Okay. Now the next one is going to be 250 degrees at 100. I'm sorry, 250 grams at 120 degrees. So if this is zero, this one up here must be 90. This one must be 180. So I'd say 220. Uh, I'm sorry, 120 degrees must be somewhere around like something like that. Okay. And so this is going to be 250 grams right here. And this whole angle from here all the way down is going to be 120. Okay. That really looks bad right now. So let me see if I can erase that real quick. And then we're going to go right here. That's 40 again. Then we're going to go all the way around again. The next one is at 200 degrees. So if this is 180, 200 would be something like this coming down like this. So I'm going to say that's a 200 degree angle. And this is 75 grams. Now, here's how you're going to determine what the resultant is. You're going to figure out how much each one of these is going in the x direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how much does each one of those block vectors go in the x direction. And we're going to add up all these x directions. So the 40 gram one goes this much in the x direction. Sorry about that. The uh, 250 gram one goes this much in the x direction, something like that. Okay. And this uh, 200 uh, degree one or the 75 gram one goes all the way over here in the x direction. So if we added all those x directions, we could figure out how much the resultant goes in the x direction. We're going to do the same thing for the y direction. We're going to figure out how much does this 40 gram one go up? How much does this 250 gram one go up? How much does the 75 one go down? We're going to add up all those uh, vertical vectors, and that will tell us how much the resultant actually goes up and down. So if you notice, all the red lines are going to be what we call the x direction. So I'm going to have an x and y chart here. So let's just do the x's first. And if I wanted to figure out how much this particular vector was going in the x direction, this is the adjacent side. The 40 grams is your hypotenuse. And the blue side is the opposite. So since I got adjacent and hypotenuse, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cosine because cosine equals adjacent, the cosine of the angle equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I'm looking for the adjacent side, once again, you can make one of those little triangles and say cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. If I'm trying to find the adjacent side, it's cosine times hypotenuse. So I'm going to say that adjacent side equals the cosine of the angle times the hypotenuse. So to do this first vector, vector number one, it's going to call this V1. In the x direction, it's going to be equal to the cosine of 40 times the hypotenuse of 40 grams, because it's 40 degree angle, 40 grams. And so that equals 40 Hang on a second. That equals 30.642. So if I write this down here, 30.642. Since it's going east or to the right, I'm going to keep that positive. Now let's do the vector number two. Vector number two, I'm going to use that same formula. So I'm going to do the cosine. Now, you would think that, wait a minute, if this is the angle here of... Um, of 120 degrees, wouldn't that be the same thing if this was 90, this would be the same thing as a 30 degree angle. Okay, But here's what you can do. As long as you're measuring the angles from zero, you can use the cosine to find the adjacent side. So if I'm going to find, I shouldn't have drew the, the blue and the red like this. I should have drew the red one like this. So this is this would be the angle. And then the blue would be how much it's actually going up this direction. Okay. So I'm looking at this green angle right here. And we said that that was 120, but it's actually only 30 from the 90 degree mark. 
Well, watch what you would do here. If this is the opposite side, now this is going to get a little bit confusing. If you're this is the opposite side and your hypotenuse is 250, you could take the sine of 30 times your hypotenuse of 250, and that would give you this opposite side. The other thing you can do, this is what I want you to realize, is that you can keep the angle like I'm giving it to you up here. I gave you the angle of 120. Well, look, if any time you're finding the x, you can use the cosine. If I'm finding the x side, here's a trick. Just use the cosine formula. So I'm going to use the cosine of 120 multiplied by the hypotenuse of 250. And guess what? It gives you the same answer as 30 times uh, sine of 30 times 250. So when you put that together, the um, the uh, cosine of 120. So the cosine of 120 times the hypotenuse, which is 250. I know this is a little bit confusing. Just write down this red, and you'll be in good shape. That's going to equal negative one, negative 125. Now let me talk about where I got that negative from. This red line here is going left or going to the west. Anytime it goes to the left or west, it's negative. The next one you're going to do is vector number three. Well, vector number three is this one over here. So I'm going to take, once again, the cosine. Anytime you're finding the x direction, just use the cosine. But use the angle I gave you. So the cosine of 20 would be the same thing as the cosine of 200. So you could also say, well, this is 180, and the whole angle is 200. You could also say that that's a 20-degree angle right there, right? So if you put in the cosine of 200, multiply it by the hypotenuse of 75, you're going to end up getting a negative 70.477. Now, the reason why it's negative is because that one is going to the left. So when I put all this together, I can add up all these numbers now, and it's going to give me what the resultant is going in the x direction. And if you look at the resultant in the x direction, that's a negative 164.835. So that's how much that all these strings are pulling in the x direction. They're actually, all three of them are pulling left at 164 grams. Now, the next one we're going to do is the y direction. So these can be long problems. Now, the y direction over here, remember this is the opposite side, and your hypotenuse is the 40. So since sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse, if you do that little triangle, so again, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, if I'm looking to find the opposite side, just cover up opposite, and it's sine times hypotenuse. So I could say that my opposite side equals the sine of theta times the hypotenuse. So let's just fill in all the uh, angles now. For vector number one, the sine of 40 degrees times 40 grams, that's going to end up equaling 25.7. Now, since it's going up, I'm going to keep it positive. Vector number two, I'm going to use the same formula, the sine of, now, once again, over here, since this vector here, the blue one, is actually the adjacent side, I should use the cosine of 30. But what you'll realize is that the cosine of 30 is the same thing as the sine of 120. So I'm just going to put in the angle that, whatever angle I give you, if you're looking for the y direction, use the sine as long as your uh, zero starts at east so i'm going to use the sine of 120 put in that hypotenuse of 250 and that will end up giving you a total of 216 216.5 so that particular vector is pushing up at 216.5 grams. Since it's up, it's positive. Now I go to vector number three. Once again, I'm going to use the sine, but just use the angle that I gave you. Instead of using the sine of 20, use the sine of 200. Because they're both going to be the same thing. 
I then put in the hypotenuse of 75 grams, and that will end up giving you the uh, negative 25.652. So this vector right here is pushing down with 25 gram, 25.65 grams of force. When you add them all together, all three of those strings would be pulling upward at 216.566 grams of force. So the resultant in the y direction equals 216, a positive 216. Now the next thing we have to do, we're actually almost done here. The next thing we have to do is though is find out where if I wanted to replace all of these strings with one string that would act like one, where would it actually go? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this. So I'm going to come over here and say, okay, my x value is a negative 164. And if I were to draw a negative x, it'd be going to the left. And my y is positive, so I'm going to draw a line going up like this. So the resultant it's actually going to be this green line going from here to there. So this is the string. This is where it would actually push. Okay. So what I'm going to do, since this is a right triangle, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out how much weight all three of those strings are pushing and in what angle. So watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say that C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. And now let's just plug them in. So I'm going to have a negative 164.835 or something like that. I'm just going to round off here. I'm going to square that plus the 216.56. And square that number. And so that means that the resultant is actually pulling with 272. 0.1 or 0.2 grams of force. All three of those strings act like one, pushing with 272.2 grams of force. And now I need to know this angle. Well, I know the opposite side. The red one is the adjacent side. So we're going to use the tan. Tangent equals op, uh, opposite over adjacent. So the angle is going to be the inverse tan of opposite, now the opposite side is the blue side here. So here's my blue side of 216. My red side was um, 164. I'm just rounding. So let's go ahead and put those in here. The opposite side, once again, was 216.566. The um, uh, red side was negative 164.835. That's a negative 164. Okay, that's, not a, that's not a 7. That's a negative 1. So when you get the angle here, that angle that you end up getting is um, 52.7 degrees. Now, I want you to look what I did here. This red line here went to the west. The blue line then went north of it. So my angle is 52.7 north of west. So one weight could replace all three of those if it was 272 grams at 52.7 degrees north of west. What you have to do in the lab is you got to figure out what string could you put on here to balance all of these out? So think about it. If the green string is the one pushing this way, that's the one that all three of those act like, you could replace it with one that goes opposite of that, towards this purple arrow, right? You could go to come down here like this. So think about it. If you had your purple um, vector, at 272 grams, which is what we call the anti-resultant, it's the opposite of it. If I had 272.2 grams, but 52.7 degrees 
to switch the uh, directions. Instead of north, it's going south. Instead of west, it's going east. If I went 52.7 degrees south of east, I can now balance out all these. So on that force table, when you pull the pin, if you put your weights at 52.7 degrees south of east, and it makes uh, 272 grams, you'll pull that pin and everything will stay stable. So let's get this one down and we'll do some practice tomorrow. Thanks.